Welcome back to the channel everyone, and as you can see here, I've completed my GMMK Pro keyboard. We're going to really quickly go over the parts that were used in this build, jump into the typing test, then we're going to go over my building experiences with this keyboard and ultimately where I stand with it so far. For starters, we are using the stock aluminum plate here. Unfortunately, the polycarbonate plate was sold out by the time I got around to verifying my initial batch one purchase. So I will have to wait like the rest of you for the polycarbonate plate to come back in stock so I can do further testing. The stock goat stabilizers were used here and I cleaned off all of the factory lube and replaced it with G lube just on the stems and XHTBDZ on the wires. I swear to God, I tried so hard with these stabilizers. They are just not great. The switches that were used here were Halo Trues, but I did some modifications to them. Instead of sticking with the stock 100 gram spring, I went with a Sprit 63 and a half gram Supreme to pull out more tactility from the switch and give it a more comfortable overall typing experience for me personally. I also lubed the springs and the stem with G lube, just not on the legs. And I applied some KBD Fans polycarbonate switch films. For the caps, we opted for drop Artifact series in the dark Dolch colorway. This is a die sub PBT cap set and it helps me pull off the whole contrast look that I wanted to go for on what Glorious is calling ice white. This is not white by any stretch of the definition. This is silver. And then to complete the look, I went with the black rotary knob option instead of the stock silver one and also opted for the phantom black version of the Glorious coiled cable. All right, now for that sound test. The actual process of disassembling the keyboard is not taxing in that you don't need exotic tools or anything like that. There's no fasteners that are really hidden or anything, but there's a ton of them. And if you've never delved into disassembling and tuning a keyboard before, all of these different fasteners may prove to be a little bit daunting for you. So it may help to have a good organization system to keep track of where everything goes and what everything's associated with. Maybe even take some photos of, you know, each step along the way so you have a visual representation of where all the fasteners go. Now, much of the reason you're gonna to wanna to disassemble the keyboard is spelled out for you on the extra gasket bag. And I quote, Due to minor variances that can occur during the machining process of your GMMK Pro, you may need to apply additional gasket strips for peak acoustic quality. More on that later. Now, as it turns out, it was a good thing I did go through all of this disassembly process because unfortunately, part of my plate foam was crushed between some of the gasket material along the edge of the case. Didn't impact plate foam usability, but it did impact one of the stock gaskets that was in place. So I ended up having to use some of the spares that they ship with it to replace it. Unfortunately, these extra gaskets are only half the thickness of the stock gaskets that come with the case. So you need to use two of these if you need to replace any single gasket in the case. As far as these goat stabs go, I really, like I said, I tried so hard. I spent several hours attempting to tune these things out removing them, reapplying the paste, putting them back in, it, back and forth, back and forth. I finally got them dialed in about as well as I could. And then after I fully assembled the keyboard, this happened. I'm not sure if maybe one of my wires popped out of place or something, but these stabs just don't really sound or feel all that great. At a later point in time, I will be taking these out, replacing them with something else. Again, that's gonna have to wait for the polycarbonate plate because I suspect this aluminum plate will probably have a hard time fitting certain aftermarket brands. Now on the topic of gasket mount, a gasket mount keyboard is designed to have the plate of the keyboard mounted in between two layers of gasket material in the top and bottom housing of the case. It's meant to isolate this PCB plate assembly from the rest of the case and give some cushion as you're typing on the keyboard. 
The problem with this implementation is twofold. First of all, there's not really enough of a gap between the top and bottom of the case for this keyboard. So the gaskets just kind of wind up pinching in too hard on all of the tabs on the side. Secondly, there's not really a whole lot of room beneath the PCB to account for any plate movement in the first place. I mean, as it is, you can see on the foam inside the case that the housings for the hot swap sockets are pressing into the foam. So you're not getting any flex there either. And I guess as it turns out, the tertiary problem, so this really is a threefold thing, there's a ton of connection points between the plate and the PCB for this assembly. So you've already eliminated basically any chance for there to be any flex with a gasket mount implementation. What I think the gaskets are meant to do, however, in this implementation, is more dampen out some of those more resonant tones that you would get out of your plate material, especially something like aluminum or brass is going to have a more resonant tone to it. The gasket materials helping absorb some of that may be helping acoustically with this keyboard. So with all of that said, this being a more rigid typing experience, I'm going to personally recommend that you stick to tactile switches on this keyboard, but if you're a linear switch user and you don't necessarily mind a more muted sounding typing experience, then linear switches will still work just fine. Just a personal preference thing, like much of this hobby to begin with. Now, like you've probably sussed out in the typing test, this board unfortunately has something of a muted sound profile to it, I personally like it, but it's all gonna come down to a matter of personal preference, and perhaps the switch you're using can have some more of that quality teased out of it that you're looking for by removing either the plate or the case foam. Again, this is a keyboard that's meant to sort of be uh, messed around with. Now, really quickly on the auxiliary stuff that we have going on here, the Artifact Series caps that I got I feel are actually pretty strong value at $45. You're getting a pretty decently expansive set of Cherry Profile Die Sub PBT keycaps. The problem is not with font consistency, but with texture consistency, and specifically along the R2 alphas on my set. It's not something that's visually apparent, but unfortunately, I notice it and I can't unnotice it. I also have the same phenomenon going on on a different set of Artifact Series caps that I'll be using for a different build coming up on the channel. So I'm wondering if there's something strange going on with manufacturing tolerances for these caps. Even still though, as an entry level Cherry Profile PBT cap set, they're really not that bad at all. And the texture issue I'm noticing does break in as you use the caps over time. As far as my modded Halo trues are concerned, this was absolutely the big brain move for me. Getting a lighter spring in these made these downright enjoyable to use. Although I will say that even though we've managed to tease out a significantly larger amount of tactility from the stem, there's still a little something something missing here. So we're gonna experiment in future content with swips. Bleh. We're gonna experiment in future content with swapping the stems from these into some different housings as well. So stay tuned for that. So I've been having a hard time succinctly putting who exactly this chonky boy of a keyboard is for. It certainly looks and feels premium. This, I mean, at least compared to any other mainstream keyboard that's out there, the fit and finish on this thing is fantastic. And it weighs enough that even if this thing ever doesn't work, you can still always hit someone with it. The added functionality of QMK firmware or the simplistic inputs of Glorious Core software and the ability to tie that in with your Glorious Mouse if you're using one, makes this a keyboard that's sort of trying to speak to everyone at once, but as a result, some of the design principles here kind of fall apart, mainly the gasket mounting system. But again, I don't really feel like the gasket mount system here is meant to provide a softer typing experience so much as an acoustically more sound one. But even with any of my gripes about the gasket mounting, the goat stabs, whatever, I still really like this keyboard and I like what it's done for the mainstream market. You can now go to a website, jump on, and presumably once stock levels catch up because the world is what it is right now, you can just buy this. Not only can you just buy it, but you have guaranteed customer service before, during, and after the sale. That's not always something that you can get as a guarantee with group buys that are similar to this. 
And even if you are getting into a group buy with a keyboard that's similar to this, odds are the bare bones is not gonna cost $170. It's likely to be much more expensive than that because economies of scale. But in the end, I definitely feel like the GMMK Pro is, if nothing else, an important step forward for the mainstream market. People are still buying this keyboard. There is a lot of hype and controversy, admittedly, over the release of this keyboard. And it's important that the rest of the industry see this is something the mainstream market wants. They want to buy it. They want to like it. Even if this isn't perfect for them, maybe this is your opportunity to put out that next big product to properly compete with this and continue to push the industry forward in meaningfully important ways. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Toss the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and make sure you subscribe to Notified so you don't miss every time our content goes live. I'll catch you all next time. Take it easy.